couple months ago, I made a video talking about how to play Portal in VR. In the video, I went over how using Gary's mod, some add-ons, and a little bit of trickery, you could take one of Valve's classic games and transport it into an entirely new medium. But with some of the comments you guys left, I could tell that the Portal in VR solution I had given you probably wasn't the best one out there, and certainly not the one the game deserves. And so, I went back to the drawing board. I wasn't going to give up on my dream of playing my favourite game ever in VR that easily. After lots of searching and testing and trying not to vomit, I've found the final two methods of playing Portal in VR. I've even found some ways of playing Portal 2 in VR as well. In this video, I'm going to outline all three ways you can play Portal in VR. I'll give you a basic overview, some pros and cons, and then my personal thoughts on each of them. So without further ado, here's every single way to play Portal in VR. First up, we've got the method from the last video, the Gary's Mod method. By the way, if you have seen the last video, you should probably stick around for this part because I've got a couple things I want to add. Firstly, you're going to need Gmod downloaded, as well as Portal installed and mounted. This will give you access to the maps and assets from the game. At this point, if you take a look around some of the maps or even just try playing through the game, you'll realise a lot of the stuff is broken and you don't even have a portal gun. Luckily for us though, the modding community has released a lot of add-ons that can fix a good chunk of the issues we're facing. But before we fix them, let's get VR working. This whole method is powered by the incredible VR mod by Katzi. Installing the VR mod is a little bit tricky, so if you get stuck, refer to my first video for a more in-depth tutorial. Once you do have it installed, you should be able to load up the portal maps and have a look around. One thing I did forget to mention in my first video was that for some reason, VR mod doesn't actually display all of Portal's maps in its built-in map browser, so instead you'll need to manually select the first map from the main menu on your monitor. Now that we have VR working, let's take to the workshop page and iron out some of those bugs I was talking about earlier. The first thing you'll notice loading into the Portal maps on Gmod is that GLaDOS doesn't talk to you like she should. To fix this, simply install the GLaDOS voice fix add-on. Next, get yourself a Portal gun by installing any of the Portal gun add-ons you see on screen. I personally like to use the Portal 1 model, obviously being appropriate for Portal 1. Another quick aside, the window through your portals that you'd normally see on flat screen are totally bugged in VR, so I'd recommend turning them off completely. To do this, use the console command portal underscore render. This also apparently boosts your performance. Another issue from the first video that's now been fixed is how GLaDOS's cores don't appear in the final battle, making it actually impossible to finish the game. An add-on has been released, aptly named Portal Core Fix, and installing it fixes this broken feature. And finally, as I said in the last video, a glaring issue of the Gary's Mod method is that a lot of the puzzle elements are completely broken, rendering some of the chambers unsolvable. There is an add-on called the Aperture that allows you to replace all these broken elements, but it would take a lot of time and dedication. If you can do it though, this method is probably the most authentic and most complete Portal VR experience you can get, minus all the bugs of course. Alright, now that that's done, let's go over some pros and cons of this method. A big pro is that this method gives you the entire game experience. It's not just a couple maps, it's the whole game in its entirety. Another pro is that Gmod VR has 6 off motion controls, meaning you can physically hold the portal gun and move it around in 3D space. Also, you don't really need to spend a whole lot to get in on this method, since Gmod is only like 20 bucks. The cons, however, are quite severe. Despite being the whole game, it's very broken, and as I said before, it'd require you to go through the whole game and do a lot of work to get it up to a fully playable level. It also runs pretty bad. I know I said in the last video that it ran at about 50 FPS most of the time, but I could not have been more wrong. The game runs at like 30 FPS and often dips far below that, sometimes into the single digits. This is bad if you 1. get really bad motion sickness and 2. just want to play a game that actually works. As for my personal thoughts on it, I think it has potential. Sure, it runs horrifically and it's about as content complete as a modern AAA game, but if a lot of work was done, it would definitely be the most accurate experience in this video. Overall, this method is very tricky and annoying, and not really for much. It's great for having a sense of presence in any environment the game has to offer, but for porting the game to VR in the most faithful way possible, you're better off looking elsewhere. This method is probably the simplest out of all the methods covered in this video, and another great thing is that you can play not only Portal 1 maps, but also Portal 2 maps in full-on 6 off VR. This one essentially boils down to installing some custom maps for Half-Life Alex. For Portal 1, the maps you'll want are the Test Chamber 1 and 2 Dual Pack, as you can see on screen, the Open Source GLaDOS Boss Chamber, and finally a map simply called Portal VR. Don't forget to install the required add-on for these maps too. For Portal 2, you'll want to install Aperture VR, thinking without portals. As the name suggests, this mod does not actually have portals in it, but every other puzzle element from Portal 2 is translated into VR flawlessly, so it's still great fun. But before we get into that, let's talk about the Portal 1 maps. One major drawback you might have noticed by now is that this method only gives you access to the first two maps and GLaDOS's chamber from Portal 1. 
It is a pretty limited selection, but I would say that the performance and attention to detail certainly makes up for it. Starting off with the first two maps, you wake up in the relaxation vault, just like in the original game. And since these maps are made in Half-Life Alex, you're able to fully interact with the environment around you. The radio blares its famous tune, and you can pick up the cup and attempt not to destroy it. You can even do my personal favourite thing, which is flush the clipboard right down the toilet. Once the portals appear, you'll finally be able to see through them, albeit through a 2D image that's projected on top of the portal. This is a minor thing, but I must admit it was disappointing to me when I first played the maps. And for the rest, I'm honestly kind of glad that I don't have a whole lot to comment on. It's just that good of a translation of Portal to VR. The only gripe I do have is with the portal gun. It looks great in your hands, but aiming it and getting it to shoot a portal into the right spot is a little bit wonky. You unfortunately can't two-hand it either, but I imagine this is something that can't be fixed. The portal gun itself is probably based upon a gun from the base game, which themselves are all one-handed. On top of the first four chambers, you also have this GLaDOS boss encounter. It looks really great, but there's not a whole lot to do since the whole boss fight mechanics haven't been implemented yet. Finally, the Portal VR map is a couple original test chambers that don't feature portals, but recreate a lot of Portal 1's assets. They're good fun and can get surprisingly complicated at times. That's about it for the Portal 1 maps. Now let's take a look at the Portal 2 maps. Aperture VR is a collection of custom-made Portal 2 maps that don't feature portals, but have basically everything else from Portal 2 besides the gels. The atmosphere is unmatched in these levels. The team who made these did an incredible job of recreating everything. It all looks gorgeous, and it really captures that misty, overgrown feel of Portal 2's early chapters. And finally, if you're a skilled modder, the developers of this add-on released a source pack, so you can create your own chambers too. It's easy to see the pros of the HLA method. The graphics look amazing, it runs well, bugs are very minimal, the portal gun when present works well enough, and overall it's really easy to just jump into and play. It's also the least motion sickness inducing on this list, given that Half-Life Alex was built with that in mind. When you take a look at it though, there are some very obvious downsides to this method. The most obvious one is that what you get is not the entire game. On top of this, HLA is a pretty demanding game. You need pretty decent hardware just to run it, and this could be a big hurdle for some people. Not to mention that the game alone costs 80 Australian dollars. That's a pretty big ask, especially if you only want to play Portal. My personal opinion, being someone who isn't really impacted by the latter two cons, is that this is probably the best way of playing Portal in VR right now. While, yes, I can acknowledge that only having a couple maps is a massive drawback, I'd rather play two really well-made maps over a full game that barely works. In the end, the Half-Life Alex method is a highly curated experience that, while lacking in quantity, certainly makes up in quality. All of these ways of playing Portal in VR are undoubtedly motion sickness inducing. But with that being said, I wouldn't go as far as some people have as to call Portal VR a vomit simulator. That is until now. The final method today will see us take advantage of a software called Vorpex. Vorpex is a 3D driver for flat screen games, and it basically allows you to take any game in your Steam library and make it into a semi-VR game. Of course, my first thought when I heard about it was whether or not I could play Portal in VR using it. And sure enough, upon checking the supported games list on the software's website, their Portal 1 and 2 both were. But as I was blinded by intrigue, I didn't realise that just because I could do it, that didn't mean I should. Vorpex is pretty simple to use. After downloading the software, all you've got to do is start it up, plug in your VR headset to your PC and turn it on, and boot up Portal. You'll then be in front of a now 3D main menu. By pressing delete, you can open the Vorpex menu, where you can customise the experience to your liking. For our endeavours, I advise using full VR mode with the 3D mode set to geometry. This will give you the most native-like VR experience. And of course, once you get in and start playing, it's just Portal. It's a basically bugless experience that runs well as long as you tweak the settings to suit you. A massive downside though is that there's obviously no 6 off motion controls. Instead, you'll have to play the game with a traditional mouse and keyboard, and sometimes use your head to aim since, by default, your mouse is locked to horizontal movement only. Basically, the only thing VR about this is that you have to move your head and the environment is 3D, so I'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not it's even worth it. You can probably tell I don't like this method a whole lot, so let's get on to the pros and cons. For pros, it's the whole game, there's no bugs. Yeah, that's basically it. Everything the game itself does works just as expected. Now for the cons. Motion sickness. This is undeniably the sickest I've ever felt while wearing a VR headset. If you gave this to a young Victorian child, they would probably just die on the spot. It's that bad. It's not even a low frame rate or anything like that. It's the fact that using a mouse to look around in VR makes my whole nervous system feel like it did a backflip. And in case the fear of your stomach exploding wasn't a strong enough deterrent, Vorpex is going to run you 60 whole dollars. And since there's no refund policy, you can't even get your money back if you don't like it. So now I'm stuck with it. 
and I'm down 60 bucks. <sighs> Look, I'm, I'm sure Vorpex can be good in other situations, but for our use case, it's probably the worst possible method. It's such a shame that this is the only way you can play a bugless Portal VR experience without pouring hundreds of hours into modding something together. In the end, Vorpex is a very particular method that works best for some people and maybe not for others. You basically flip a coin using it, with one side giving you one of the best Portal VR experiences, and the other side taking a couple years off your life. And there you have it, three ways, every way, to play Portal in virtual reality. In a way, this feels like the end of an era for me since I've spent the better part of two years looking for a way to play my favourite game in VR, ever since I got my first VR headset in 2020. And although at the end of the day, we still haven't found that perfect experience, we've still got some solid foundations. The community behind Portal is such a creative and talented one that I don't doubt in the future we can make a full port of Portal to VR ourselves. And another thing I don't doubt is that I'll be here for it. But for now, thank you for watching. Actually, you know what? If Valve can license out Portal to f Geico of all people, how about you just get someone else to make a VR port? Come on, Gabe, I know you can hear me!